In the previous example, we saw how we can make visualizations more clear by removing extraneous elements. We can conceptualize this relationship using something called the data to ink ratio. The data to ink ratio was defined in 1983 by Edward Tufte and describes the ratio of ink used to describe the data to the ink used to describe everything else. So what is a good data to ink ratio? Typically, we think of high data to ink ratios as being very good. It means that a large portion of the ink used in a visualization is used to describe the data points themselves. A low data to ink ratio is usually very bad and describes a visualization in which the majority of the ink is not used to describe the data, but is actually describing something else. In general, we want to have the highest data to ink ratio as possible. If we have a low data to ink ratio, we have extraneous elements in our visualization that should be removed. Let's look at an example. In this example, we look at two graphs that are representing the same information. On the left-hand side, we have a visualization that has a low data to ink ratio. Notice the extra elements in the visualization that can be removed, such as the blue background, the horizontal and vertical grid lines, and the outer black border. What this shows is that a large amount of the ink used in this visualization does not directly describe the data at hand. On the right-hand side, we see a visualization with the same data with a high data to ink ratio. The only ink used is ink that is actually describing the data directly. Comparing both visualizations side by side, the one on the right is not only more pleasing to the eye, but is also much easier to understand. When we're building data visualizations, we always want to strive for as high of a data to ink ratio as possible. Let's go through a few more examples of how we can take a visualization with a low data to ink ratio or extraneous elements and reduce it down to something that is simpler and much easier to understand. In this example, we're going to take a visualization and try to improve its data to ink ratio. Here, we have a bar chart showing the number of calories for various types of foods. At first glance, we can see examples of bad visualization techniques that we've discussed previously, such as this busy background, poor color choices, and the use of 3D shadowing and gradients. Let's walk through, step by step, how we can simplify this visualization and increase its data to ink ratio. First, let's remove the wood background from the outside and the gray background from the inside increasing contrast and legibility. We can also remove redundant labels, such as the legend and some of the titles, as this information is encoded elsewhere. Now that we've removed the backgrounds, the heavy borders separating the various elements are no longer necessary, so let's take those out too. Remembering our color theory, we shouldn't use more than one or two colors in a visualization unless it is encoding some value in the data. The color of these bars don't reflect any differences between the different foods, so let's remove all of the colors except for the food of interest. In this case, bacon. Great, we've already improved the data to ink ratio quite a bit, but there's more that we can do. Recall that 3D graphs, including gradients and shadowing, can be misleading. So let's flatten out those bars and remove the drop shadows to make it more clear. We can also make the data stand out by reducing the boldness of the labels and the grid lines. If we want to go even further, we can remove the lines entirely and encode the values directly into the bars themselves, like this. Comparing the two visualizations side by side, you can easily see the effect of improving the data to ink ratio. The visualization with the high data to ink ratio is far more clear, more interpretable, and has all the elements you need for a great visualization.